What's going on y'all? Today we are at Cedar Swamp here in Gautier and I am going to be addressing one of the questions that I get probably more than anything else here on the channel and that's going to be what would I recommend as an inshore setup for somebody that's just coming into fishing. So today we're going to be talking about inshore setups 101 and possibly a setup that won't break the bank. Okay, so we're going to start here talking about the rod first then we're going to talk about a couple of options for reels. We're going to go into lines and then we're also going to talk about some live bait and art artificial setups but getting started here with the rod okay so for inshore fishing um you basically have three things you want to look at you want to look at your length your power and then your action right um for me for an all-purpose inshore rod seven foot kind of seven foot does a lot of stuff right um you can get rods up to seven six get them down to six nine seven foot just happens to fall right there in the sweet spot so for length look around seven foot um when we're getting into our power right for pretty much anything inshore i would highly recommend going with a medium power now if you want to get into specializing different things for like trout you might go to a medium light if you do a lot of more heavier red fishing stuff black drum stuff like that you might want to go to a medium heavy maybe even a heavy but for me, all purpose, medium is gonna be what I would go with. Um, and then for action, okay, I would go with a fast action rod. It's gonna cover a wide range of stuff. So, so just to recap the rod, I would go with a seven foot medium power fast action. Uh, the rod that I use is a chubby rods. This is a seven two medium fast. Um, it does everything for me for catching flounder, speckled trout, redfish. It's, it's a pretty light setup and extremely sensitive. Uh, the cool thing about this rod is it's 100% made in America right in Atmore, Alabama with American tackle components. Uh, so it's a really, really high quality rod. This rod right here is around $130. And uh, yeah, I could not recommend this one enough. All right, so getting into talking about the reels that we're gonna use for me, I got Shimano reels lined up. I'm gonna show y'all an inexpensive one, kind of a mid-range one. And then I'm gonna show y'all a little bit higher end on the reel. Uh, but the reels that I'm showing are spinning reels because most people that are getting into inshore fishing are gonna start off with a spinning reel. Um, one of the biggest things you got to look at is what size are you going to go with you're getting into fishing you don't know what size you want this that and the other for me 3000 does everything you need anything inshore can be done with a 3000 size spool um if you are just a live bait fisherman you can go up to a 4000 uh if you're just like a trout fisherman smaller fish maybe flounder stuff like that you're not doing a lot of redfish you could go down to 2500 but for me, a 3000 does everything you need it to do. Um, a reel that I would start off with is a Shimano Nasty. We call it the Nasty. But uh, yeah, they're around 100 bucks. They're really, really durable, um, really, really smooth out the box. They do require a little bit more maintenance uh, on them to make sure that rust is not going to build up over time. But if we're getting started out and we're a little bit more on a budget, I would start off with a Shimano Nasty. Now moving into kind of the mid-range stuff, this is running around 140, and this is a Shimano Maravel, right? Awesome little reel there. And then one of the higher end reels that I would highly recommend uh, is this Shimano Vanford. These are insanely light, very, very smooth. Um, yeah, they just hold up to salt water a lot better than other options. And they're running typically around 230 bucks or so uh, for the Shimano Vanford. All right, so moving into lines, right? So first thing we're gonna talk about is lines. So for all inshore fishing, you need to be running braid. Um, I was real stubborn early on and I wanted to stick to fishing mono or fluoro strictly. Uh, it wasn't until I switched over to braid that, you know, I don't know, I feel like there's no other line. I've not used anything since making the swap. Uh, braid allows me to cast further. It allows me to fit more line on my spool. Uh, I don't get to stretch, so I, it's a lot more sensitive to those flounder bites, those light trout bites. 
need to be throwing braid. So uh, the braid that I would highly recommend running is Suffix 832. This is an eight strand braid. You don't have to run Suffix. The key here is to run an eight strand braid. Eight strand braid is a lot slicker, a lot smoother. Um, it casts further in my opinion, but it's just better, better line. It has a thinner diameter to it. So eight strand braid, like I said, I use Suffix 832 for an all-purpose setup right one that you can do just about anything with i would go with 15 pound braid okay uh now just like other stuff we talked about if you want to go with strictly redfish or black drum and stuff like that maybe bigger sheep's head you may want to go to 20 maybe even 30 pound braid right uh, if you are strictly fishing for flounder or speckled trout, you might want to step it down to 10. But for something that does a little bit of everything, 15 pound braid is the way to go. Now, to our braid, we're going to need to run a leader, right? Uh, what our leader does is give us a little bit extra abrasion resistance, right? If we're fishing around a little bit more barnacles, oyster shells like that. Uh, braid has a tendency under pressure to if it gets nicked it's going to snap right whereas um, fluoro and mono will have a tendency to kind of fray a little bit before it just snaps on you so also if you're fishing in cleaner water uh, you want something that's more invisible to the fish a fluorocarbon leader will accomplish that for you um, what i use is yozuri um, hd carbon okay and i to be honest, the reason that I use Yozuri is because it comes in a very small, thin package, whereas like your Seaguar and other stuff's a lot bulkier. For my fishing, if I can keep it streamlined, slim, small, that's what I want. So that's why I go with Yozuri. Um, but I also run 15 pounds. Same as the braid. If you're catching bigger fish, go step up to your 20 and your 30. If you're catching flounder, speckled trout, you can step it down to 10 and maybe even lighter than that. But for everything, I'm running 15 pound braid to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. All right, so going back to the setup, we're gonna talk about real quick about our how long our leader needs to be. Okay, so this is a setup that I use just about every day right here. Um, the leader that I'm running right now is about four feet long, which is about right there. So this leader actually started probably around six or seven foot. Most of the time when I'm running my leader, when I'm ready to make a cast, my leader knot is all the way down here close to my spool. Um, and really you can run your leader as long as you want it. Uh, as long as your leader knot is not down in your spool. If your leader knot is down in your spool when you go to make a cast, it's gonna create a lot of issues for you. Now, another question I get is what knot do I use to tie those? I use a double uni knot or uni to uni. There are a million videos on how to tie that online. Highly recommend getting very familiar with your knots. Uh, the uni to uni is one that I've used for six eight years and i feel like if it's not broke don't fix it this works for me all right so now getting into artificial so we're gonna talk about artificials then we'll move over to live bait setups right so for our artificials you really need three things in your box these three things can accomplish anything you want to do one is going to be a jig right a soft plastic so obviously this is my bait i'm going to promote my bait you don't have to use it we do really really well on it uh, but this is the Southern Salt Hoodwink, right? It's just a soft plastic. What that soft plastic allows me to do is jig on the bottom of the water, pop up, try to trigger some strikes for flounder, which is, if, you tr if the purpose is flounder and you wanna throw artificials, you gotta throw a jig, right? That's how they're caught. But um, yeah, and I'm pairing this up with just an eighth ounce or a quarter ounce jig head. It's all you need right there to throw your jig. Secondly, we need something that can target strikes in the middle of the water column. Typically in around three to four foot of water, I'm gonna throw a Miradine uh, 17 MR, mainly for trout. Sometimes redfish, if they're in the area, they're gonna hit them as well. I wouldn't use something like this for flounder because I'm not making contact with the bottom. Uh, but yeah, Miradine 17 MR, uh, for speckled trout, if you're noticing your fish are in the middle of the water column, you're gonna wanna throw a suspending bait like this. And then lastly, we wanna make sure we have a top water 
one of the best top waters in my opinion is the Heaton Super Spook or the One Knocker is another amazing one made by Heaton. But early in the morning, right before sunrise, things like that, uh, or if you're noticing a lot of top water blow up, throw your top water bait like that, right? So that covers everything you need right there. Jig, suspending, and a top water. All right, and then for all of our live bait applications for anything inshore, redfish, speckled trout, flounder, uh, triple tail even, right? I am going to use a kale hook, all right? Um, I don't know if y'all can see this real well, if the light's reflecting off the packaging, I apologize, but a kale hook, and preferably in a number one size, but you want your hook to match the size of the bait that you're using, not the fish that you're trying to catch, right? So if I'm using live shrimp, I'm not gonna use a two-aught hook, right? Because the hook's too big for the shrimp. I'm gonna go with a number one or a number two. Likewise, if I'm using live croaker, a number one might be too small. I might want to go to a one aught or a two aught. So, um, if you're using live shrimp, though, number one, number two size kale hook, uh, you can free line that and just have that directly onto your leader. Or if you want to suspend your baits up, highly recommend using a popping cork setup. For me, I like to use the Paradise Poppers by Bomber because they have a titanium rod in them that does not get bent. So if you catch a fish, he comes up and hits that, that um, stainless steel rod in it and it bends, your popping cork's trash after that. Where this titanium rod, it flexes, but it doesn't get broke, right? Then also, I always get the popping cork with the cupping on the top. That way when I'm popping it, it's making that gulping sound like a fish coming up and eating off of the top. So when buying my popping quartz, I always prefer the ones with the cup. I do hope that this information was helpful to y'all. Um, go out there, smash y'all some fish. Uh, if y'all have any questions at all, just comment down below. I'll be sure to get back with y'all. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate y'all tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We are trying to hit 75,000 subscribers this year and need all of y'all's help to do that. Yeah, we'll see y'all in the next one.